Hello again and welcome to the fourth section on early Elizabethan England. Um, we're actually going to go a bit further back in time to the late 1400s and early 1500s in order to gain a better context about religion in England and in Europe more widely in that time period before Elizabeth comes to power. It's really important for us to understand religion so that we can really look into the religious tensions in Elizabethan England uh, with more contextual knowledge, with more uh, knowledge of our own. Now on the slide you can probably see a place that's quite familiar to a lot of you. That's Glastonbury Tor. So the tour is the hill. And on top of the hill we have St Michael's Tower. And on the right hand side we have a stained glass window. And on that stained glass window there's a picture of the abbot of Glastonbury Abbey, Richard Whiting, who is the abbot or a person in charge of that abbey until 1539. And the reason I'm showing you this is because in November 1539, Richard Whiting, who at the time was an elderly man, was dragged by the King's men from the Abbey up to St Michael's Tower on a hurdle, which is like a wooden frame. And then he, once he was there, he was hung, hanged, drawn and quartered, which is the uh, death of a traitor. And the four quarters of his body were sent to Wells, Bridgewater, Bath and Ilchester, and his head was put on a spike at the gates of Glastonbury Abbey as a warning to others. And so what we're going to do now is go through a story that from, which starts in Germany and ends up at Glastonbury with the death of Abbot Richard Whiting. And in the process we're going to uh, discover where some of these religious tensions between Catholics and Protestants might come from. So before we go on to our storyboard, which is what our task is going to be for this section, uh, I just want to go through some key terms with you. Um, they're on the, on the slide now. And we're going to be using these words or these, or these phrases uh, through our storyboard. Um, and it's important for us obviously to know what they mean, otherwise uh, the storyboard might not necessarily make sense. And so what I'd like to do is pause the video here and then either make a record or take a picture of these keywords so that we can apply them as we make our storyboard. And so we're going to start our storyboard now. Um, now I apologise in advance for some of the pictures. These are made from cartoons I found on various different, various different places uh, to kind of go through the story of this man, Martin Luther. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my version of the storyboard and then what you can do as I go through or maybe afterwards so when you pause and go back, you can go through and start um, making your own version of this storyboard. So you can have a visual and written depiction of who Martin Luther was, what he did and how this links in with England and more specifically with the death of Abbot Richard Whiting at Glastonbury in 1539. So we're going to get started. So, here he is, Martin Luther. He was a German monk and he was a Catholic, but he felt that the Catholic Church was not following the teachings of the Bible correctly. And there were several reasons for this. And we're going to go through some of those reasons now. Reason number one is that the Catholic Church allowed people to purchase indulgences. Now, indulgences is one of those words that was on your keyword list a moment ago. And you could pay these to forgive sins. This made the church very rich. And Martin Luther thought that only God could forgive sins and that this forgiveness could not be bought with money. So one of the reasons why Martin Luther, this German monk, was angry is that rich people could pay indulgences to the church, have their sins forgiven and then go to heaven. Whereas he felt that only God could forgive sins and that it wasn't the place of the church to take these payments uh, in exchange for sins being forgiven. He also thought it was unfair that poorer people were less able to have their sins forgiven than the wealthy. Martin Luther also thought that the Bible should be written in languages other than Latin. This would make it easier for ordinary people to understand. Now previously, the Catholic services and the Bibles had been written in Latin, which is the language of ancient Rome. 
Now, a problem with this, in Martin Luther's view, is the fact that only really priests could understand it. Ordinary people couldn't understand what was being said in these services. He thought it made far more sense for the Bible, for instance, to be written in the language that ordinary people would understand best. So if you were in Germany, then it would be in German. If you are in England, then it should be in English. He also thought that churches should be plain and that lots of decoration distracted people from worshipping God properly. So he wanted to get rid of the ornate statues. He wanted to get rid of the fancy robes and incense. He wanted to get rid of the stained glass windows. Instead, he wanted plain churches so that people could focus on God more and not necessarily on how uh, shiny and decorated the churches were. So Martin Luther came up with all of these problems and ended up in 95 uh, on a list that became known as the 95 Theses. And he put these uh, on the door of Wittenberg University. He nailed them into the door on the 31st of October 1517. So this was him going public with his grievances. Him saying out in public that these are the things which are wrong with the Catholic Church. Now this was a very dangerous thing to do at the time because the Catholic Church had huge, huge amounts of power. And it led to an angry response. So this made the Pope very angry. He excommunicated Martin Luther and told him that he had to leave the Catholic Church using a papal bull. Martin Luther took this in public and burned it and made his own church as a protest against what he thought was wrong with the Catholic Church. So a few things with this section, a few key terms that you see in your key word sheet. So excommunicated, so kicked out of the Catholic Church. And a papal bull is a document which this message about the excommunication would have been sent on. And this is what Martin Luther burns in public before he creates the Protestant church, which is protest against the Catholic Church. So Luther's new type of Christianity would be called Protestantism. This is because it was a protest against the Catholic Church and the Pope. Luther's ideas spread throughout Northern Europe. Eventually, in the 1530s, Protestantism reached England. As you can see, it spread all around Europe, particularly uh, places like Scandinavia, Germany, uh, places like the Netherlands, and also England. Henry VIII accepted elements of Protestantism. This is because he wanted to make himself head of the church to deal with the problems he faced, such as wanting him to divorce his first wife. He made it against the law if people didn't accept him as head of the church. Now we'll look at um, religion and religious tensions in more detail in a future video. Henry VIII was a difficult one because even though he broke from Rome, he left the Catholic Church uh, so that he could be head of the church in England, he still worshipped in quite Catholic ways, so he didn't adopt many of Martin Luther's um, kind of new ideas. That comes later under Edward, his son, for instance, and Elizabeth. But he does adopt elements of it, particularly this idea that means that he, as King of England, can be head of the church so he can get this divorce from Catherine of Aragon and marry Anne Boleyn. Abbot Richard Whiting criticised Henry VIII's marriage to Anne Boleyn. He was sentenced to a horrible death in the town of Glastonbury. So this is how the story of a German monk links to this horrible execution and death at Glastonbury in 1539. So now you've seen my version of the storyboards, it's time to create your own. Um, I'd like you to uh, use words and pictures to demonstrate the story of Martin Luther and show how the story of a German monk could, uh, led eventually to the death of Richard Whiting in Glastonbury in 1539. Once you've done that, I'd also like to have a go at explaining in as few words as possible why Martin Luther created the Protestant Church. Why did he think it was necessary to get rid of Catholicism? Things like the Pope uh, being in charge of the church, for instance. Why did he want to get rid of those things? Thank you very much for listening. I look forward to seeing you next time.